Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at AskAdamTorres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Tony Hunter on the line, and he's founder and president over at PWH Enterprises. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Looking forward to this discussion. Oh, man. So we got a great topic today that you picked, and that is uh, capitalizing on disruption. I mean, that's a big one, and I want to get into that. But before we do, I'd like to give the audience a little bit more of a feel for your background. So how did you get started in your career and in business? Well, uh, Adam, I'm a former publishing executive. I had an over 20-year career with Tribune Company. And uh, the highlights of that was at the end of my run there, I was the publisher of my hometown newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, and the CEO of Tribune Publishing. And uh, that was during what I call my degree in school of hard knocks. I was in the (laughs) C-suite. I was in the C-suite from 2008 to 2016. So think about this, first-time CEO, uh, September of 08, financial collapse occurs, Great Recession explosion of social media, our, our parent company filed for bankruptcy, and all this as a first-time CEO. So, you know, I've got a – I'm over budget, as they say, in disruption. I've seen it <laughs> from inside, and I'm frankly uh, enjoying the view from outside uh, the publishing sector. But I uh, learned a lot, and that's why I say I have a degree from the School of Hard Knocks. And as I pivoted out of that career in publishing – I decided to take that to establish my own firm and provide advisory services. That's awesome, and I think that's a great transition here. Um, so before we get into the topic, though, at the end of this, I'm going to give uh, you the opportunity to leave your website or however else somebody else can connect with you and your team over at TWH Enterprises for advisory services. But I want to make sure that the right types of individuals and or organizations connect. So what are the types of clients that you typically like working with? Well, I've, I've worked with clients, of course, in the publishing sector, having my experience there, and I'm currently chairman of the board of a cannabis company, an Illinois-based cannabis company, Revolution Enterprises, and I've also done some work in nutraceuticals. I, I work with big companies and small companies because, uh, from my perspective as an operating executive and leader, there's a lot to learn um, Big companies can learn from small and vice versa. So I've, uh, I've worked across those sectors, and I also do a lot of work with uh, young emerging executives, whether that be in mentoring, career development, or helping them develop their leadership capabilities. Fantastic. And I think that's a great transition to today's topic. So let's just dive right in. So capitalizing on disruption. I mean, easier said than done. A lot of people would like to do it. I mean, it's a cute tagline, right? But where do you want to start with this one? Because this is hard. It's not always easy to do. No, no, Adam. It's, uh, it's clearly a lot of, uh, a little bit of science and a little bit of art. Uh, just and like a little bit of pain. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pain. A lot of pain and, uh, But, you know, I kind of look at it this way. I define disruption as when forces outside your organization wreak havoc on your business model. And so we all know that's occurring now with many businesses. Almost all sectors have been punished uh, as a result of the pandemic uh, in this this country. But I, I view it as that. It's outside your company. Forces are wreaking havoc. And I think about that capitalizing has got to be a mindset because within disruption, there are always opportunities afforded to you, and you have to be prepared for those 
and then capitalize. And that's how I view transformation. That's another buzzword that I hear a lot. Uh, transformation, transformational leadership. We've got to transform the business model. And my simple way of viewing that is it's capitalizing. There's opportunities. And as a company, you need to be able to pivot and you need to be able to respond to these things that are outside your control. And that really determines who survives and who doesn't. And so that's how I view disruption, this capitalizing, and it's, it's, it's a mindset and it's having your organization prepared because you cannot catch up to a crisis. You're either ready or you're not. And so that's the essence of how I look at uh, disruption, how to capitalize, and, and really as leaders, your company is relying upon you as a senior leader to find a way out of disruption and to create a future for the company. And I believe that's, you know, at the core of succeeding is having great leaders that get the best out of the people that work for them. Love that. You cannot catch up to crisis. You're either ready or not. You just made my tweet of the day, Tony. I was like, that hit me. I'm like, man, it's like, it hurts because sometimes you're not, you're not ready just to be, just to be blunt and things catch you out of, uh, off guard. So let's talk a little bit more to those people right now that maybe aren't ready or weren't ready and they, you know, they didn't know this and now they're in the middle of it. Like how, what should, and again, there's no magic bullet. There's no, not expecting any magic there, crystal ball, but what are some, things and or themes that people that are kind of in that in the middle of it right now should be thinking of to maybe dig themselves out or to pivot or, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could go there. Yeah, great, great question. And I'll, uh, I'll bifurcate this into two answers. Let's talk about leaders. Leaders themselves, I, I, I'm really a believer in this notion of you never stop learning and you need to make sure you're current and you're relevant all the time as a leader current and relevant. And that is at the core of preparedness. That if you're not current on what's going on today, you're not relevant and able to relate to people in your workforce. And to do that, you need to be adapting along the way. You need to evolve your style along the way and then occasionally reinvent yourself because the circumstances around you are constantly changing. And if you stand still, you fall behind. And as a leader, I'm just a big fan of this notion that you're never done. You can always grow. You can build your toolbox much deeper and much broader. And as a leader, that's how you get yourself ready for these moments when circumstances and opportunities collide and you are like, I'm ready. And when you're ready, you can then go forward with confidence and you can capitalize. So evolve, adapting, evolving, reinventing, staying current, staying relevant. I can't, we don't have enough time, Adam, to go through that. But that's the, to me, that is what great leaders do, regardless of whether they're in the business for, been in the business for 10 years or 50. And greatness is when you stay relevant over decades. And that, to me, is like the North Star for being a great leader. As a company, I've coined this term. It rolls right off your tongue, Adam, orgagility. And when I think about companies succeeding this kind of an environment and being prepared, I think about the ability to implement ideas quickly, and you said it, to pivot frequently. Because one thing's certain, you rarely get the idea right in the first place. It's iterative. You need to pivot. There are unforeseen circumstances. And so I define org agility as, you know, the ability to implement quickly and pivot. But to do that, leaders should be developing their organization such that everybody understands the mission and the values of the company. Everyone is action-oriented. The worst thing is doing nothing. Having alignment and accountability across your organization something that's not sexy, Adam, and a lot of people like to, you know, kind of pass this over, but to make sure people are held accountable and there's alignment across the organization is another thing I've learned the hard way by not having it. And then last, I love this one. I love competitive and innovative organizations that not only love to win, but they hate to lose. And so, therefore, they're constantly pressing on the new ideas, constantly looking at ways to take share. 
And when you have that kind of an organization, disruption is a bump in the road. But when you don't have that, it sometimes paralyzes organizations. So you need to develop that kind of organization and develop yourself as a leader, as I defined it. And those two combos are the kinds of combinations that lead to great success, regardless of the level of disruption, from my perspective. Man, Tony, that's well put, number one. But number two, what what book is all this in? Because I know my, my audience is going to want more of this. I know you have to have a book out there with these concepts in it, right? Well, Adam, I'm a... Uh, I'm, a, I'm from the publishing sector, and I'm doing some uh, leading from the front content, as I call it. I'm doing podcasts. I'm doing some content on LinkedIn, Medium, and other places. The book is in the works. It is not ready to it be. It better announced. be, Tony. It but better be. I, see, I didn't even know. And that, that's unscripted yeah. audience. They know I dig. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy, no, he's got too much for us. Where's yeah, the book? I, How do we buy it? I want one. I'm very interested in sharing my experience. Uh, with emerging leaders. It's my my next legacy I would like is to help as many emerging leaders as I can because uh, I've been helped by so many people in my career. I've been blessed with great mentors. I work for the best media company in the world, in my opinion, Tribune Company. And uh, part of my uh, going forward plan, Adam, is to have uh, some leadership uh, book, a leadership book, but also just to pay it forward for all the folks that want to be great leaders because I've been taught by so many. Man, that's awesome. I love that. Um, so, Tony, that being said, if somebody – you mentioned Medium. You mentioned some other things. Um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to – well, two-part question, final question. If somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about TWH and, and you know, connecting with you and your team, number one, and also, and number two, if they just want to read your writing and kind of follow your brand overall, like, I mean, what's the best way for them to do all that? Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, one, you can follow me on Twitter – at Tony W. Hunter, and LinkedIn, Tony Hunter. And uh, you can also reach me and, and check out our website at TonyWHunter.com. And uh, that's the best way to get me. And, uh, and we'd love to uh, grow the tribe, as I say, and the followers, because uh, leadership is at the core of success for not only companies, but communities, and clearly um, our country. And leadership right now, in my opinion, is uh, in high demand. And so it's my goal to do as much as I can to help as many as I can, uh, based on, as I said, remember, I'm going to end with uh, this, with a lot of humility. I've been helped and blessed by many mentors, and I also went to the School of Hard Knocks. So what I've learned is not always by doing it right, but in many cases by doing it wrong. So uh, that's the other message I would leave for leaders is you're not going to bat a thousand. You're going to make mistakes. But the key is to be able to dust off and learn from those. And as you said earlier, pivot. Pivoting is, is crucial as a leader and a company. So, Adam, that's my, that's my stick, my spiel. I'm going to stick to it. I love it. I'm a fan, and uh, when this, when this book comes out, you better uh, you better connect. Put me on your list of media resources because I'm definitely want to get that interview in, and I definitely want to um, help bring that book to my audience and readers also. So awesome stuff there, Tony. And thank you again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Um, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, a lean review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters uh, Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. I'd love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And, Tony, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. My pleasure.